The Money Show. Personal Finance. This is The Money Show. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Warren Ingram in studio. And I've got a great email from Joe Warren Ingram. I need just to share it with you very briefly. And I want to talk about retirement annuities. And I think what's driving this sort of email from Joe and many other people is they're looking at this new 45% super tax rate and saying, hold on a second. If I earn more than one and a half million rand a year, I need to find ways of ensuring that that money stays with me rather than going to the fiscus. So Joe's question is one I think a lot of people in that bracket would be thinking about, maybe one that all of us should be thinking about because we should all be contributing more to our old age. But let me read it to you. Does it make sense for me to contribute to my husband's retirement annuity rather than to my own? My husband is in the top tax bracket and I'm somewhere in the middle. We're not in a position to be each maximizing the allowable 27.5% as we are both trying to pay off a bond. I was thinking about contributing to my husband's retirement until we reach 27.5% of his gross earnings. Then if there's anything more, I can contribute adding this to my own retirement. In this way, I assume we'll be getting money back from the higher tax that he has already paid rather than the lower tax rate that I have paid. Does it make financial sense to do this? Over to you. I think it's a very good strategy. I mean, I think so. So, just to explain the, the practicalities, um, you know, there's there's no uh, tax implication in in terms of something like a donations tax issue. You know, if if um, between husband and between wife. Between husband and wife, and I think that's an important one because obviously, if they were partners as opposed to uh, as opposed to spouses, they, they, then you could have an issue. So, so how how they as a as a married couple decide to direct their savings is entirely their choice, and and so you know, so, someone paying. Uh, the maximum tax rate, you know, it would make the most sense for them to get the, the, the biggest tax benefit. So from a percentage point of view, uh, you know, it wouldn't make a difference. But from a, an actual RAND value point of view, it makes a huge difference on the person earning the bigger salary. So so I think it's a, um, it's a very good call. Uh, and, and, you know, going back to, to all the usual comments about RAs, you just need to make sure that it's a good, efficient, low-cost RA, uh, that you know what the fees are, that you know how you're invested. But, but beyond that, uh, de- definitely very good uh, very good call. Uh, what about, okay, and I don't want to tempt fate here, but Joe and her husband are getting on very nicely now. Um, you see this, I'm sure, quite regularly where husband and wife aren't getting on so well anymore. And in some cases, husband and wife may be headed for a divorce. Now, she's may given very generously, donated all this money to her husband for his retirement annuity, and suddenly it's all going a little bit pear-shaped. Uh, agreed. So, so now you've got the situation where you need to know how they are married. If they're married, as, as most people are nowadays, uh, you know, with antinuptial, with accrual, then, uh, then it won't really be an issue because what they brought into the marriage on day one, they, they would each be entitled to whatever they brought in, but what they have generated together, they would have to share. So, so in this situation it, it wouldn't be as big an issue the, the practicalities would be a bit more difficult though because um, you know retirement funds are regulated and you know it would re- require orders of the court etc to split those up and so 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 there is a little bit of risk there and and, and in that sense uh, you know each of them contributing equally to their own retirement annuities would be would be safer so you know I guess what the, the caveat to Joe is if things are looking a bit a bit dodge in the relationship maybe maybe this isn't a good strategy to follow but but the beyond tone that, of the email suggests it's not. <laughs> Yeah, so okay. so so I think um, I think it, it it is an issue, but not not um, you know not if they're married with a cruel. Okay, I mean right now, I mean retirement annuities are really interesting things right now because as economies get tighter, people start looking for money. They lose their jobs. They maybe get a, they get their. Uh, it might it won't be a retirement annuity because you can't touch you you can't touch your retirement annuity until you're fifty five, and when you can start drawing down a, I think it's a maximum of seventeen and a half percent of the value every year. But for general retirement products, if you've got a, a company pension, and uh, are, are, are you seeing people sort of quitting their jobs to get their hands on the pension pot so they can fund a kid's education or fund a lifestyle asset or whatever the case might yeah, be? Yeah, it's quite scary. So, so we, we're primarily talking about um, about companies that have provident funds, and uh, and and w- what we're seeing. So, just to give you an idea, so, you know, someone actually studies this stuff, uh, and in this instance, um, th- there's a um, Old Mutual does a, re- a thing called the Old Mutual Retirement Monitor. 
and it came, it came out again this year. Um, and they look at this, uh, you know, they survey uh, employees of retirement funds. And in 2012, which is not really that long ago, uh, about 19% of people surveyed said that they, they would consider changing jobs so that they could cash in their retirement uh, funds and, 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 and access the money. Uh, now, now we jump to last year, and, and that number goes up to 35%. So more, more than, you know, if you put 10 people in a room, more, you know, th- at least three and potentially four of them uh, are, are thinking about this quite seriously. And, and what's really, um, you know, interesting about this is, you know, almost intuitively, most people would say, oh, it's probably people that are very low income earners that don't have a lot of financial literacy. Well, well that's not true. You know, the, the people who are earning you know, salaries of 40,000 rand a month or more, who you would assume have good access to information, can, can employ professional advice, uh, 27% of them are having the same thought. So, so that just tells us that that roughly a third of our of our country's workforce uh, are, are are thinking about this, uh, and and just to talk about uh, about the principles of this. I mean, this is massive wealth destruction. You know, it, it, a lot of the time. You know, the study is not really comprehensive in terms of following what actually happens to that money when people do cash in. Uh, but but, but, it, but in, anecdotally, if I look at this, it, it really happens for two reasons. One, people are in serious uh, debt trouble, and, and so they view this as the only way to get out of their, their debt situation. Uh, or two, it, it's very much uh, a, an uninformed lifestyle decision. In other words, they, you know, they, they see this money there, they'd like to buy a new car, they, you know, they can't get car finance, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and and they make the the easy call uh, as they see it to to do this. But I'm the, glad you qualified easy call because it's it shouldn't be an easy call. It should be something that should be vigorously interrogated. Sure, there will be cases where there's been family hardship where there is no choice. The family either doesn't have supper for the next week, um, or you, you cash in your 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 pension savings and kids can have some food uh, to eat. And I, I mean, and uh, that's fine. But you know, too often the, the the call is made too easy. It, it's made far too easy, and, and I think the, 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 just the, the implications of this, number one, uh, that means you have to leave your job. So, so you, you resign from a job in a really difficult economy where jobs are incredibly scarce, and, and now you pay uh, a fair amount of tax. You know, if, you, if you're at a high tax bracket, it's you know, close to, uh, to half of your, of your fund you now lose to tax, uh, and, and, and then, you, th- then you get that, the, the remaining money that you then settle, whatever the debts are, et cetera. But, but you're in a position where you've, you've got a short-term cash injection, but you have no salary. So, so if you, I mean, and, and what I see in this situation very often is the the person takes that, uh, you know, that that reti- that, uh, that that retirement fund benefit, cashes it in, and then the problems start to compound because they cannot get work, and and so now you sit in a situation where that hole just starts to dig itself far faster than anything you can do to to, to fill it up. So, so I, I mean, I think you know, um, it, you know, the retirement reforms that have been delayed and delayed and delayed would have been a huge benefit to, to situations like this because yeah. people on an annual basis would have been allowed to, to cash in 10% of their, of their retirement fund benefit, which is still not great, but it's, it's better than, than the whole deal. And secondly, they can maintain their jobs. And and so you know the the, the fact that this isn't through, uh, we we seeing you know people committing you know massive financial wealth destruction that, that I just don't think they'll ever recover from to be honest. Yeah, and those are, are calls that you can't make easily. Please don't uh, make them easy. If you have to, you have to. But uh, consider other options if you can. Uh, foreign exchange and retirement annuities. Can you get a in South Africa? Can you buy a dollar denominated retirement annuity or a pound denominated or renminbi denominated uh, retirement so, annuity? So we have something called Regulation Twenty Eight in South Africa, which dictates uh, what proportion of money that, uh, that that retirement funds can invest in in different asset classes, and then also how much of their retirement Retirement funds can be invested in South Africa and overseas. So, Regulation dic- uh, Twenty Eight dictates that you can have a maximum of twenty five percent of an RA uh, invested overseas, and and so that that is the the, the limit. So, you, you'll find a very large majority of retirement annuities, especially those uh, in, in that that invest through unit trusts, will will have the maximum. They will be twenty five percent offshore, uh, but you can't get a pure dollar denominated RA sitting in South Africa that you can contribute to or that your your company can contribute to. Um, an, e- an easy question. Can I have more than one RA? 
Absolutely, and 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 many many people do. So so very often you'll find uh, you know people will have an an RA that uh, that maybe they they did a lump sum contribution to, and a year later they they find a better cost one, so so they contribute to the other one uh, or to a new one, and and so on and so on. So there's no issue there. Just what you need to note if you're doing contributions to to various RAs, just make sure you don't go over that limit, which is twenty seven and a half percent of your of your taxable salary per year, because you won't get uh, the tax benefit if you over contribute to an RA, and and, and then you know for, for those that are earning real money at the at the super you know the super super income people uh, you know you know there's also a three hundred fifty thousand rand limit, uh, but but for the bulk of us uh, as mortals it's twenty seven and a half percent. Okay, so as you can have yourself ten RAs if you like, it becomes quite difficult to administer and keep an eye on. There's no reason to have more you know, that many, but one or two, maybe three. Um, is 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 it is a good idea? Is it a good idea to have more than one? I, I don't like it. Uh, uh, to me, I think one of the things about about money is you 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 need to have uh, your affairs uh, simply structured in, a, in you know in a way that you can understand that you can monitor what's going on. And very often, with with a lot of the product providers nowadays, the the more uh, you can aggregate your assets with them, the, the the lower the fees are. So, for example, you know a unit trust company will typically charge you you know let's say 05 percent as an administration fee when you've got an RA with them uh, on the first you know portion of money let's say it's a million or a million and a half but once you go over that your administration fees start start to drop tremendously so so what you can do for example in a, on a unit trust company is have one RA and it's invested in three different unit trusts that, that makes sense to me but but having three different unit trusts uh, oh, sorry three different RAs at three different product providers just means that your complexities are, are increasing all the time and I'm not sure that you're getting the cost benefits of, of the aggregation and, and there's that was the dark sort of question about what happens if you suddenly disappear off the face of the earth, uh, let's say die, um, and it just makes your affairs more complicated to tidy up uh, for those who, who are left behind to clean up the mess. Uh, absolutely, and, and, and I, th- I think that was actually a point I should have mentioned with Joe as well. Um, you, you know, that, that's also a very nice route. You know, an RA, uh, if, you, if Joe's husband nominates her as the sole beneficiary of that RA, um, it, you know, it goes straight to her without having to go through the whole probate process so no executor's fees are paid, etc., etc. And if Joe and, and her husband died at the same time, you know, the money would go to their children, for example, um, without having to go through through an estate duty process as well. So so it, it is a fantastic vehicle if it's low cost and if it's transparent and, and well managed. Final question. My producers are going to kill me. But uh, <laughs> uh, what happens if somebody wants to emigrate? What do they do with their RA? Uh, it's a, it, is a, it is a tricky one. So, so um, I, is it, Does it need a separate discussion? I think so. All right, you need to go read your What Happens If I Retirement book. <laughs> because that's the law just changed, that's why. Oh, okay, of course it did. Okay, I mean, thank you, Warren. Um, um, look, we, we've got a whole pipeline of stuff we need to talk about, but if there is a, a quick answer to that question, please remind me in a week or two. Um, I know you're off on holiday next week. Have a nice holiday, and thank, thank you. you. Um, drive carefully. Warren Ingram from Galileo Capital.